Hi everybody, welcome to another tutorial on Nano Studio 2. In the first video we looked at how to navigate the interface, what that looks like. In this video we will focus on the song editor. So I just opened uh, Nano Studio, we are on a project which I just called song editor. Let's click on the uh, song editor itself. So in this video I'm going to show you how to, you can use tracks. Uh, I'm going to go deeper into the controls here that you see at the bottom. I'm not going to cover the automation and uh, also the library uh, and the function with, which are up here. Those will come uh, in the next video. As you know, um, in learning a new application of the complexity like this one, it's good to take one step at a time. So let's start. <clears throat> so we are we click on here, we are on the song editor, as you know. Um, down here is where you see your tracks, okay? If you click on the plus sign, you add a track. By default, you add a track, which is called Obsidian, default. This is the default internal synth that the Nano Studio comes with. You can solo that part, or you also can mute that part. If you double click on a part, you go directly inside that particular instrument, in this case, the Obsidian synth. Okay, let's go back to the song editor. Now, if you expand or minimize vertically um, um, the screen, so let's, let's make it even smaller, clicking on the minus um, button, you see the controls of solo and mute have gone. If you expand, if you expand again the view, they will appear. If you expand again, you will see the meter here. Now, if you double click outside the meter, you will go back to the instrument like so. If you double click on the meter, you will go directly into the mixer view with that track I highlighted. Perfect. So let's uh, minimize again a little bit the window. Um, so as you can see, when you, you click just once on uh, the plus sign, you add a default track. Um, let's do that again like so. If you click on the minus symbol here, you delete the track which is highlighted. You can say that it is highlighted because there is a lighter gray, almost a white color on each track. So let's click and hold on the plus sign. Here we have a choice to add an obsidian track, which is what happens by default. We can also add a slay track. A slay track, as you can see here, is where you get access to the internal sample. So let's double click. Here's your files, your sample, pads, etc. We'll look at that in more details in another video. Back to the song editor. The other option you have is you can add an external mid track. Here we go. Let's double click on it. Here is your extern your keyboard, which will be pointing to an external mid track. Again, we'll look at that in another uh, tutorial. Back to the song editor. You can also, oops, let's click and hold. We can add also an audio unit instrument track. Let's double click on it. Here as you can see you can browse all the audio units um, uh, available and you can select on one and that loads with all the, the instrument on the right hand side. Back to the song editor. Uh, let's keep going. The next thing you can add is just add a track with no instrument. Let's double click on it and this can become useful if you want to add MIDI effects, audio effects, uh, send the returns route. Okay, now back again to uh, the song editor. Let's click and hold. As you can see, the bottom, uh, the next two options are group the selected track and group selected track with sibling. So before we do that, let's come out from there. Let's click on this checkbox. This allows you to select multiple tracks. So let's select, for example, the external MIDI default and also the audio unit. Now let's click and hold on the plus sign and let's uh, select on group two selected tracks. Now, as you can see, there is a new group called group one and underneath that you have two children and track number four and five, the MIDI default and the other units. Now let's select, um, let's remove the selection, the multiple selection, let's uh, highlight the group. <clears throat> let's double click on the group, okay. And then let's go on setup and let's click on group one and let's give the name of uh, um, external instrument. 
like so and let's press OK. Let's go back to song editor. As you can see, the re I renamed the group one as external instrument and underneath there you have the two children tracks. OK, now let's um, click on selecting multiple tracks. So let's select the obsidian default and also the uh, rock solid, uh, the slate rock solid uh, tracks. Click and plus and on the plus sign and hold, select again group to select the tracks. There is a new group. Let's double click on group one. Let's click on setup on the name and let's change that to internal instrument and press OK. Back to the song editor, we have this new group. Now, again, let's select the internal instrument group this time and the external instrument group. Let's click and hold on the plus sign and now let's select group the two tracks but also with the sibling. If we were doing the same but without the siblings, the option above the children track will not be moved along. So let's select that option and as you can see we have a new group one which has underneath the internal instrument group with the children track number three and four and then we have another group external instrument uh, with the two children the underneath external MIDI default and adjective pro the audio unit track. Okay now let's um, remove all like so perfect the other thing um, I want to show you if you have multiple tracks like um, so then you can also add the track lane which you can uh, use for separation okay okay you can double click on it if you want to go towards it you can arm it for a coding etc right okay so now we let's delete that so now uh, let's also delete that one and let's have two uh, obsidian default tracks okay perfect so let's go through what we have available here on the uh, at the bottom as the options so the first one is great let's click on it you have the ability to select snap what does it mean well first of all let's could we draw a region like so on the first track and then another region like um, so on the second track perfect now we have a snap enabled so if I click on hold on a region and move it will move to the next bar because the grid which is select which has been selected is one bar now we can make it every two bars for example have a look click and hold try to move it it will move only by two bars and then up and down of course or where it's not possible we'll move to the next bar of course okay and um, you can change the settings you can go to uh, longer bars or you can go finer so for example you go to one 128th well that would be so fine that when you click and move it looks like there is no snapping but in reality there is it's so fine of course you can also say I don't want any grid and I don't want any snap and in that case you can click and move it oops freely without any snapping in any grids okay right so now let's enable snap again in one bar as it is by default let's click hold and move and realign it to that bar the next thing which I want to show you is um, how you can use the duplicate function the reason I'm going to skip the duplicate is because it will become handy to have some duplicated items before we go through the previous section the previous function like the select function so let's click simply on um, one region as you can see you can move from one to the other let's click on that region on, on track number one and let's click on duplicate it will simply duplicate that right now we can go we can undo that and we'll remove that we can also click and um, to redo and now if we hold that you have a full history of the things in it you can redo okay let's click again on that first region let's click and hold on duplicate now here it gives you the selection to create a, a simple one or four eight six du 16 32 duplicates let's select four there you go so you have now four um, three duplicates of the first bar now let's undo that 
Let's click and hold again. This time, let's create a link uh, track and let's duplicate it only once. As you can see, there is a new symbol, like a chain here, which means that these two regions are linked. What does it mean? Well, let's select this region. Let's double click on it to go inside the piano row. Let's click on draw and let's draw some notes. As you can see, we have been drawing the notes just on one bar. But when I go back to the song editor, they appear also on the second bar. That's why they're linked. That's what he means when we refer it as linked. OK, now let's go to zoom. Let's click zoom. We have different selection. So we have minimal zoom, like so, self-explanatory, the minimal view. You can say everything that is there on the tracks, including bars, just the selection. So I've selected just that, um, that bar. Or we can say zoom at the beginning or zoom at the end in terms of where you are uh, from a timeline perspective or zoom where there is a loop. Now there is not a loop so let's click on minimum or minimum. Let's double click here where this says on the type line and I, I, set, it, uh, I set a loop here uh, for this particular um, um, bar. I can change that, of course. I can double click on it to disable it, double click again to enable it, click and hold at the end and move to extend it, click and hold at the beginning and move to extend it further. So with that selection on, so we have a loop on the timeline. If I click now and say zoom to the loop, it will zoom just to where the loop is selected. Okay, now let's um, go to minimal view again. Select. So very important. So let's zoom uh, a little bit. So at the moment we have the toggle function off. Let's enable it. As I enable it, look, you can select a, a multiple one all in one go. If that was not selected, okay, you move toggle between one to the other. Okay. Next, we have the ability to select everything makes sense or we have the ability if something is selected like so that bar we can select the row select that row where the selection is or you have the ability to re inverse the selection so these two were selected but this one wasn't so it reversed the selection so this one is selected all these first two we have the ability to select the earlier bars so these two or also selected select the later okay so if we do that and we select uh, select the bar and we say select later it will select these two as well okay or we can say if this is selected select linked so it will select what is linked to that bar or that region sorry okay so you have seen the draw function you enable it and you draw region clicking on each one of them you can, of course, click on uh, uh, one region and delete it. We have seen the duplication as well. Next, let's, let's have a look at the action. So let's click on the action. Now, we can say loop to selection. So we'll create the loop only for this selection, which can come extremely handy if you want to just loop that. Click again. We can say join. So how do we do that? Let's say that we have... Um, we click on draw, we create another region here near this one. So let's um, um, select, click and hold these two uh, regions. We click on action and we say join. It will become one. At the same time, if I move where the cursor is, the play cursor like that, click only once. So it's positioned there. It is in the middle of this big region. I can click on the action again and say split. In this case, I have two new regions instead of a big one. Next, you have the selection to unlink. So let's uh, select these two, which are linked, and click on unlink. And you can see the link um, symbol has disappeared. These two regions are not linked anymore. Um, Further on, you can export that region. If you click on it, you can export the content as a MIDI file, which we're not going to do at the moment. 
Next, click on property. Here you can select, um, give it a name. If you want to rename uh, that particular part, you can mute it or you can set it to play in a cycle or you can change the color, which can become extremely handy. Next, I want to show you how to use this vertical control and horizontal controls. So if you have that region selected, click and hold the button to move up and down. You can move it up and down in one track to the other. Very handy. Next, click and hold on this first symbol, which is pointing to the left. And what you can do is you can move it left and right. Do the same on the right control. You can change the width, the length. Again, extremely, extremely handy. So we have seen the timeline. We've seen the controls. We can move left and right, as you can see. Here, um, up and down, let's zoom a little bit more, um, zoom a bit more, uh, like so, okay, uh, add more tracks, like so, so the vertical bar becomes also available, you can zoom out, click on the minus instead of the plus, you can remove the bars, like so, and the next thing I want to show you is, let's go back to the beginning, if I click play now, you can see the cursor, which is uh, which will move and play. Okay, let's move back. He plays back to where the loop is because the loop is active from a play perspective. Let's click this, follow the cursor. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's click again. You will see that uh, the window will follow the cursor. Okay, so I'm going to stop here, otherwise the video will become too long. We will continue the journey in the next video. I hope you found this useful. See you next time. Bye.